Good Morning Miramar, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10 a.m., right here, right now. Good morning, Miramar, and happy holidays. I am Tiffany Davis from the Parks and Recreation Department, and thank you for tuning in today, Thursday, December 7th. Today, we will be joined by Detective Natasha Richardson with the Miramar Police Department, who is here today to discuss all of the important holiday safety tips that you need to know. Then we'll be joined by Angie Font, Secretary for the Kwanzaa Club of Miramar and Pembroke Pines, who will be talking about all the ways they are giving back to our community this holiday season. Please remember that you can tune in live on Facebook and Periscope using the at City of Miramar handle. You can also download the TuneIn Radio app and search It's Right Here in Miramar to listen live on the radio. The weather for today, Thursday, December 7th, will bring some rain throughout the day, so be sure to pack those umbrellas and raincoats. The high temperature will be 80 degrees and low will be 62. Do you have questions, comments, or concerns about public works, utilities, or parks and recreation? Join us for one of our upcoming residence forums to address your needs and concerns. This special information meeting is open to all residents and will discuss city operation that includes traffic control, water treatment, street and sidewalk maintenance, recycling, parks and recreation activities, as well as update to current and planned capital improvement projects. The first meeting will take place Tuesday, December 12th from 6.30 to 8 at the Miramar Multi-Service Complex Ballroom located at 6700 Miramar Parkway. And the second meeting will take place Wednesday, December 13th from 6.30 to 8 at the Sunset Lakes Community Center Ballroom located at 2801 Southwest 186th Avenue in Miramar. Save the date. Join us at the candlelight visual honoring the victims of the 2010 Haiti earthquake on Friday, January 12th from 7 to 9 at the Miramar Culture Center Arts Park Theater located at 2400 Center Place. At this time, we will be chatting with Detective Natasha Richardson about important holiday safety tips that you need to know. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, well, thank you for being here. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Detective Natasha Richardson. I have been working with the city for uh, approximately 17 years and as a law enforcement officer, just over 15 years. All right. That is so great. 17 years is a long time to be in the law enforcement. Um. So you're here to tell us about the importance of holiday safety tips. Everyone loves the holiday season. The main things on everybody's mind is shopping and buying gifts. So can you tell us what we could do as persons of shopping, um, the things we could do to make sure that we're safe? Absolutely. Shopping. I love, love, love the holidays. And I know a lot of people do, and so a lot of people shop. One of my tips with, in reference to shopping is to make sure that one, if it's possible to go with someone, mm -hmm. try to shop as a group or with a friend at all times, whether it's the daytime, nighttime. Unfortunately, there are people out there that are going to try to make your holidays a little bit more difficult. Um, if you don't want to carry a purse, uh, make sure that it put your money in different locations. If you want to put your purse in the trunk, put it in there prior to arriving at your destination. Because people are watching, they're going to see what you put in your trunks, what you put in your cars, and then if you leave them, they're going to go after it. Try to park at nighttime in a lighted area so that it's lit up and if anybody tries to break in, hopefully people will be able to see and prevent it. Um, when you're shopping, mm -hmm. I know when I go shopping, I get a lot of bags and sometimes I don't want to carry them all. If you're going to, if you get a lot of things, mm -hmm. Take them home and then come back. Don't put them out in the car and leave them there and then go back into right. the store. Because that's what a lot of people tend to do. We like to shop, 
at one place, put them in the back seat or in the trunk, and then just go to the next store, not knowing that people are probably following us. Exactly, exactly. People us. are always watching. They're watching if you have cash, don't sit out there and count it in front of, you know, out in public or in front of everybody because people are going to try and do everything they can to get a hold of it. Um, cars, lock all of your vehicles at all times. Mm -hmm. Can't stress that enough. Whether you're at home or out, always lock your vehicles. Please don't leave anything visible. Um, if you have to, put everything in the trunk and lock and secure your vehicle. And um, talking about locking our vehicles, a lot of us feel comfortable because a few of us live in gated communities. So we feel like we don't really have to lock our cars because we're in a gated community. Can you stress that no matter where you stay, it's important to... Yes, absolutely. That's very important. Thank you. There's a lot of vehicle burglaries um, throughout the year and especially during the holidays. And a lot of people leave their wallets and keys and cell phones and everything in their vehicles, even if they feel like they're just running into the house for five minutes. Unfortunately, you don't know who your neighbors are. Uh, you, some people get followed into the gates. Um, you don't know who your neighbors know. And any time that you see, you know, you, anyone that's walking past and can visibly see anything in their vehicles, they're going to do everything they can to get it. So just please keep everything secured, take it out of the car, take that extra step to just make your holidays more jo enjoyable. And I know we're talking about shopping and um, the safeties of shopping tips, but there's well, online shopping as well because those gifts get delivered. That's a fantastic question, yes. Delivered. Um, a lot of shopping is done online now, mm -hmm. and especially during the holidays. My suggestion is... If you're going to have gifts delivered, either if it's possible, have it delivered to you at work or make sure that someone's going to be home. And a lot of these apps will tell you exactly when your gift is going to be delivered or your item. Make sure that someone's home to be able to pick it up right away as soon as it's delivered. Or sometimes these, uh, some of these apps will have certain locations where you can drop, have them delivered to and then you can go and pick them up out of a secure locker. Those are very important things because... People are driving by and just looking at all the gifts that are sitting out in front of your door and just taking them. Yes. I've seen plenty of that on the news yes. where people are just politely going up to person's doors and picking up the package as if they ordered them themselves. Yes. And it's very sad because, you know, especially if it's a Christmas gift or, you know, mm -hmm. a special gift for someone and now they're not going to be able to have it. Also, may I add one more thing? If you're shopping online, use credit cards. Try not to use your debit card because some of these... Uh, sites lead you to uh, fraudulent websites and they take all your money. Oh. And at least with the credit card, you can dispute it with the, mm -hmm. and they can do an investigation. And that way you're not exactly out of your cash money if you take yeah. it out of your debit. Debit card. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is um, sometimes we sell items for people to buy, like on Craigslist mm -hmm. and um, places and apps like that. Yes. Are there any tips? With yes, with that, um, really a lot of people. One of the major tips is to meet in public. Okay. Yes, and unfortunately now that you're going to have to take that one step further because there are people that are thinking they're doing the right thing and meeting in public, and there's still people are stealing their things and snatching their items, or sometimes some people are even getting hurt by it. My suggestion is to meet at your local police department's lobby. You can meet in there; it'll be a safe environment. You can do your exchange, and then. Everybody right. goes about their own. I love that idea. Yes. I would have never thought of that. How much safer can you get other than the police department lobby? Well, we hope. I hope. Yes. yes. <laughs> I, I just place. want everybody to have an enjoyable holiday. It, it, you know, it, it breaks my heart to see some of these people that get victimized after, you know, with their hard-earned money trying to make the holidays great for their families. Now, I know that you have these safety tips um, for us. Is there any way they could find this on, I guess, the police website? Yes, or? we posted on our Miramar Police Department social media on uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter. And also our community resource officers, they go out to their different communities and, and uh, share them with their uh, communities and email them and have their homeowners association send them out to all of their uh, residents. That is great. And do you know that um, website or the um, Facebook app so you could tell the audience? Yeah, it's Miramar Police Department Facebook. Okay. All right. 
So thank you so much, Natasha, Detective Richardson, thank you. for these tips. And we hope that you pay attention to them because this is a wonderful time of the year. But when crime happens, it's sometimes damper that. And we don't want that to happen. So we're getting ready to go into our commercial break. And then we'll have coming up next, Miss Angie Font from the... Um, Kwanzaa Club of Miramar. And again, thank you, Detective Richardson, for these great tips for the coming up um, viewers, showing our viewers. So stay tuned. Thank you. In Miramar, as we reach for the stars to make Miramar the destination of choice for sports, theater, arts, and recreation. For a sports complex that has it all, the winner is Miramar's own Anson Sports Complex. 24 acres of action, a 400 meter Olympic qualifying track, and a stadium that seats over 5,000 spectators. It's a complete sports complex that has it all and has played a leading role in making Miramar the sports center of the region. Next, for an exquisite landmark, rich in green space for picnics, music under the stars, and even farmers markets, family gatherings and outdoor festivals, the winner is Shirley Bronca Memorial Park. It's a place to celebrate cultural heritage or even an end of summer block party. Shirley Bronca Park is in Miramar's historic Eastern Corridor, which makes it a local celebrity and will see even more growth in the years to come. Ready for lights, cameras, action? When you're talking about entertainment, the winner is the Miramar Cultural Center, playing a starring role in Miramar and the whole South Florida area. It is located in the middle of Miramar's vibrant town center and is a place for music, theater, dance, and celebration. It draws audiences from all over to this fabulous state-of-the-art facility. They also come because of its regal appeal, full-service 300-capacity banquet hall, an Anson Art Gallery and Exhibit Hall. With safe, affordable youth arts programs, the Miramar Cultural Center fosters and prepares tomorrow's rising stars. The Botanical Garden adjacent to the Cultural Center is right on a beautiful lake with an incredible illuminated reflecting wall. Here art mixes with nature for an award-winning experience. And the best of the best for world-class entertainment and fun, no surprise here, it's Miramar Regional Park, the region's premier destination Perfect for sports of all sorts, it wins a supporting role with baseball, football, and 172 acres of action. Did we say swimming? You will find an amazing heated ADA-compliant aquatic complex and pavilion that supports Miramar's outdoor lifestyle. And making its debut a star in its own right is the new Miramar Amphitheater at Regional Park. Here, under a massive canopy, 5,000 people can enjoy the Miramar Amp and all kinds of entertainment, 3,000 on removable seats, while another 2,000 can enjoy picnicking on the grassy apron and promenade area. What a great winning addition to the entertainment cast of Miramar. Concerts of all kinds, nationally renowned performers will find a great audience here and a great place to showcase. It's easy to get to from Miami to Palm Beach, and draws from over 6.7 million people that will love coming here. It wins the latest and greatest award and will be a winner for the years to come. The Miramar Amphitheater at Regional Park. So you see, with 41 community and neighborhood parks, two aquatic centers and entertainment venues, Miramar shines bright. It's a great place for cultural arts, sports, entertainment, and fun to support a year-round lifestyle. And in this year of entertainment, it's easy to see that the star for sports, theater, arts, and recreation is all right here in Miramar. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to Good Morning Miramar. 
I'm joined by Angie Font, Secretary of the Kiwanis Club of Miramar and Pembroke Pines, who is here to discuss giving back for 2017 holiday season. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, I'm so glad you was able to make it. So first, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Angie Font. I've been a resident of Miramar for eight years. All right. And one of the first things that I did when I moved to Miramar was look up my local Kiwanis Club and join. And that was immediately the way that I made friends in my community. Okay. So that's my core group of friends and that's the people that I decide to surround myself with. And it's a fantastic group of people. Okay, now, I remember being in high school, I was part of the Key Club. The Key Club was associated with... The yes. So Key Club is one of our sponsored leadership programs, mm -hmm. and it's in over, I want to say, 90 countries around the world. So there's Key Clubs in China, there's Key Clubs in Saudi Arabia, and I'm sure you remember doing a lot of community service yes. in your Key Club. Mm -hmm. So we here in Miramar and Pembroke Pines have five Key Clubs at Everglades High School, Flanagan High School, Miramar High School, uh, Somerset Central, and at Pines Charter. All oh, right. Yes. And so give us a little bit more background information of the Kiwanis Club. So Kiwanis is a community service organization. It's actually been around for 101 years. Mm. Uh, it started in Detroit, Michigan as a networking organization for business people. And it's transformed into majorly community service. And we focus on kids in the community. So the wonderful thing about Kiwanis is that every club can focus on their community and what the individual needs are. So there's nothing specific that has to be done mm -hmm. as per Kiwanis International, for example. But we can assess the needs in our community and say, OK, these are the problems here. Let's come up with projects to solve them. And we can come up with whatever we want and, and try to solve the problem that way. All right. So before we get into giving back to our community, can you tell us more information specifically of the Miramar Pembroke Pines Kiwanis? Of course. So the Miramar Pembroke Pines Club has actually been around since 1991. So we're cel we just celebrated our 26th anniversary. We've been here for quite a while. The Miramar Police Department, who you just had on your show, uh, is a member of our Kiwanis Club, and they do a lot to help us help the community. Um, so a lot of things that we do in our community have to do with toy drives or uh, Thanksgiving food drives. Um, back to school activities, uh, crafting days at local foster facilities, things like that. Um, especially back to school, we do a big thing called Christmas in July. And oh. we take all the homeless children in Broward County, which unfortunately is about 1,500 children oh, who are either in the foster care system mm -hmm. or um, maybe just don't have stable housing, bring them over to the BB&T Center and everyone gets backpacks with clothes and school supplies, shoes, socks, underwear, everything that they need to be ready for the first day of school. Oh, that is so great. And how can you join? Well, you can find us online at www.kiwanismiramarpines.com. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So we're really active online. All right. Um, all you have to do is reach out to us, come to a meeting. We meet on Wednesday afternoons at Brew's Room, 12 o'clock. And um, come see what we're all about or come to a project. Our calendar is all online. Everything is always open to the community. Come check out a project, and, um, and I promise you, you'll fall in love and you'll stay. All right. So now that, let's say, I join... Let's um, find out information about how we could give back this holiday season. Absolutely. So we have a full schedule this holiday season. Um, some of the things that we have coming up uh, this uh, Saturday, there's always Horses and Handicap, which is our equine assisted physical therapy program for physically and mentally disabled children and young adults. So that goes on every Saturday, and it um, is also sponsored by a lot of the clubs in South Broward as well. So there's writings every Saturday. And um, on Sunday, we have our big pancake festival. So we're going to be over at Pancakes, Unlimited Pancakes, I sh might add, um, over at Pines Charter High School from 8.30 in the morning to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So and please come check us when? out. That's this Sunday. This Sunday. This Sunday at okay. Pine Charter High. So, and all we're asking for is a $5 donation. There's going to be unlimited pancakes. There's going to be face painting, pie throwing, balloon animals, photos, all kinds of good stuff going on. So it should be a fantastic time. Oh, that sounds exciting. Yes. And um, any other activities? Yes. So uh, next week, we're actually going to be going with some friends over to the Joe DiMaggio's Children's Hospital and doing a crafting activity with the kids that are, uh, unfortunately, in the hospital right now. So we're going to be making like these paper plate snow globe things with them and just kind of hanging out with the parents and giving them an opportunity to forget about whatever situation is happening right now with them that's uh, put them in the hospital and bring a little holiday cheer for them. And then later on, um, on Christmas Eve, we'll actually be going back to Joe DiMaggio's with the Miramar Police Department to 
pass out gifts with Santa to all the kids that are in the hospital on Christmas Eve. All right, that sounds great. So um, how can I help or assist the club to participate with these activities? Can I give financial um Absolutely. Um, we have a way to donate online, and mm -hmm. it is at kiwanismiramarpines.com slash donate. Um, but more than that, I think that we really need the boots on the ground. We mm -hmm. need the hands to help with a project. We need the help with the planning. We need the help with more ideas. We need the help to help grow our club because the more people we have in Kiwanis, the more lives we can impact. So for yes. every new member that comes into Kiwanis, we can impact on average 206 more children. Oh. And that's just with one, one. new member. So right now we have about 15 members in our club mm -hmm. and we're hoping that this year we can expand that by quite a bit because that means that maybe we can help a thousand more children or two thousand more children. So um, what we need is members. We need people with just a little bit of time, not a whole lot of money. It's not about money, just a little bit of time to put into making their community a little bit brighter. All right. So I, I want to, you told me when you moved here in Miramar eight years ago, and you um, joined the club. Tell me your beginning experience and some of the highlights that you have so far being in the Kiwanis Club. Oh goodness, well right now, um, I do have the distinct honor of serving also as Lieutenant Governor in Kiwanis. So that means that I uh, help with all the clubs in South Broward. I have nine clubs ranging from uh, all the way north to Plantation and Dania Beach and Sunrise, all the way down to Miramar, Pembroke Pines and Hollywood and Hollandale Beach. Um, so it's been a great experience to get to know not just the Kiwanians in my club, but so many more Kiwanians across the county and the state. So that's been an amazing experience. Um, but I do have to say that my favorite project, the one that just blew my mind, was Christmas in July. And just being able to know that you're taking part in a service project where that child would probably not be smiling today if it wasn't for the mm -hmm. time that you took to just hang out with them for a little while. Like I said, it's not about having a whole lot of money. You know, money does go a long way, but if we get a group of people together, we can do great things to fundraise that kind of money that we need to do whatever projects we need to do. So Christmas in July is an amazing one. Horses and Handicapped is a fantastic program. We raise all the money for that project. Mm -hmm. So none of these families have to pay for the physical therapy. Oh, that we is We provide awesome. everything absolutely for free. That is great. Absolutely. So those are some of just my favorite projects that just warm my heart every time that they come around. Are, are there any more that you're doing um, this holiday season other than the ones that you mentioned? Um, we just wrapped up our Thanksgiving drive, our food drive. So that goes on uh, pretty much from the summer all the way through uh, November. And we provided uh, almost 100 families in Miramar with a huge bag full of the food that they would need for Thanksgiving and also <coughs> some necessities and a grocery gift card to buy anything else that they needed. Um, but for the holidays, our major focus, obviously, is on the kids and mm -hmm. getting toys to everybody and visiting everybody at the hospital. So that's a really good time. That is so great. Um, so can you tell us just some more information, like how can they participate? Absolutely. And then do they have to be a member to participate in any nope. of the activities? All of our projects, um, I, with the exception of maybe a few projects where we're going into foster care systems, mm -hmm. so we need everybody to be background checked and know who everybody is. Mm -hmm. um, with the exception of those kind of projects, all of our projects are open to the public. So we post everything online and our calendar is on our website. So any project, any meeting that's online that somebody wants to come to, they don't have to be a member. Sometimes we have friends of ours that will come out to a project and they've been coming out for two or three years and they haven't joined yet maybe because they don't have the time to commit to maybe coming to a meeting all the time or something like that. Um, but it's, it's open to anyone. There's no restrictions. There's no circumstance under which we would tell somebody, we can't use your time <laughs> and we can't use your generosity. So no, you don't have to join, but we would absolutely love it because the more people that we have helping us plan projects, mm -hmm. the bigger these projects can be. So maybe if this year we did 100 families for Thanksgiving, if I have two or three more members, maybe next year I can do 200. Right. So that really is the difference between one and the next. All right. So um, Key Club, let's get back to Key <laughs> Club because I really, I remember, I won't tell you how long ago that was Don't it's when okay. I was in high school. <laughs> But I remember I was in the key club at Dillard High School okay. in um, Fort Lauderdale, and we did a lot of community outreach. So what um, do the key clubs here in the Miramar area, 
Um, and can you name again the schools yes. that do have them so our listeners can know Absolutely. that their kids, that you could join the Kiwanis or your kid yes. could join the Kiwanis. That would club. be amazing. Everybody <laughs> would be part of the, the Kiwanis family. I will say my mom is also a member of Kiwanis, so we try to keep everything in the Kiwanis family. But we have key clubs at Miramar High School, Everglades High School, Flanagan High School, Pines Charter High School, and Somerset Academy Central. So if your kids are going to those schools, definitely tell them to look up Key Club and have them join. Uh, you know, the, the students in high school have a service community, a community service hour requirement. This is a very simple way to get it. Our kids, um, we've just, you know, gotten into the first few months of school and most of my kids already have well over 100 hours each. Mm -hmm. So these Key Clubs are very large. They have at least 100 students each and they do amazing things in our community and they are the future of our community so those are the future Kwanians and leaders and the next mayors and next commissioners of our community so it's it's really fantastic to see them work yes that is so great and again let's just give our viewers a reminder of the activities that you're doing to give back that you all could participate in as well uh, for this holiday season. Yes, absolutely. So uh, if you go on our website at KiwanisMiramarPines.com, uh, our calendar is on there and any project is open. Just contact us, let us know that you're coming and we'll be happy to welcome you. But the bigger thing that we have coming up is this Sunday, our pancake breakfast. It's a huge fundraiser uh, for UNICEF and for our uh, community service projects. That's this Sunday, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Pines Charter High School. It's just a $5 donation for unlimited pancakes. Unlimited pancakes unlimited for $5. Pancakes. That's I know. awesome. <laughs> like, oh my goodness. I can't wait. I think I'm going to be there. Yes. I might be the first person there because I love pancakes. I have two kids. They love pancakes. I will see you there. So we'll be there. Fantastic. We'll be happy happy to participate and Great. as a former key club member i will oh, make sure that's I'm wonderful thank you so much <laughs> so uh, we're so happy and we thank you so much so much so much for letting us know all the activities that you do and you don't have to be a member at first you could just help and then if Come you see out. that it's a fit you'll be able to join the kiwanis club of Miramar, Miramar, Miramar and Pembroke, Pembroke Pines. Yes, so that's for Miramar and Pembroke yes. Pine residents, yes. correct? Absolutely. And then a question, do you have to join the club that's in your You can area? join any club. You can join the club that's nearest your job, maybe. Okay. Uh, whichever one's most convenient. And every visit every single club, see everybody's personalities, and, uh, and you'll find the perfect thing. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for tuning in to Good Morning Miramar.